join us at Women of Courage and celebrate the achievements of women. primaries and the general election are coming up so we thought we should say something about why you should vote. Elizabeth Wallis from the League of Women Voters in Texas says here are some reasons why you should vote. She says if nobody votes it's not a democracy. If you don't vote people will not take you seriously. Voting is how you define yourself as part of something larger than yourself. Number four, if you do not vote, someone else will make the decisions for you. Voting is part of your independence. Number five, it matters. It matters to the future of you, your family, and your community. Six, people who don't vote are letting down their families and their communities. Moms, do you have an 18 year old in your family? If so, give him or her register and be certain they vote. Eight, refusing to vote isn't a rebellion, it's a surrender. Number nine, love your country, prove it by voting. Number 10, voting is the great equalizer. The richest billionaire in America gets just one vote, the same as you and me. Number 11, what do the smart people do? They vote. They are voters. Number 12, elections have consequences. Be a voter. Elected officials make all the big decisions, and they listen to the people who vote. Number 14, if you don't vote, you're invisible to the elected officials who make all the big decisions. Number 15, did you know people with money spend billions of dollars on elections? Billions spent for television ads, mailers, people to make phone calls and to knock on doors. The smart people spending all that money are trying to influence the voters. If it didn't matter, they wouldn't do it. Number 16. If you don't vote because you think your vote doesn't matter, then the people who don't want you to vote because you are afraid of how your vote will not win. Number 17, bad people are elected by the good people who did not vote. Hundreds of thousands of Americans have died to protect your right to vote. You owe it to them to vote. 19, voting is the right thing to do. Start preparing to vote now. Go and register at the Secretary of State's office. Find out where your polling place is and be prepared to be the first person in line to vote that day. If you do not have transportation to the polling place, call your local library and find out who is offering free transportation to polling locations. Remember, vote. You need to live life with a purpose. You need to spend the time needed to explore, to find your true passion. There are so many unhappy people in this world not willing to make a change. There are so many unhappy people not focusing on the big picture. One out of three people are happy with their lives. Think about that for a second. 70% of the people you see every day are not happy. And the majority of that has to do with purpose. People are programmed, wired to be okay with the minimum. People stay in jobs they're not passionate about. They date people who don't support them. 
hang out with people who don't help them grow. This can't be you. You need to spend the time to discover what your true calling is. What are you passionate about? What do you see yourself doing to make your mark? Are you in a job right now that you're truly happy with? Do you wake up every morning excited to start your day? If not, that's okay. You know now this isn't fulfilling you. But what are you gonna do about it? Are you willing to make a change to help reach your goals? If you are, it needs to start now. Because this won't happen overnight. Finding your true calling. But once you do, you will see how everything changes. You will begin to see the quality of your life increase. All those problems you had, they slowly fade. You begin to see how powerful life is with a purpose. Last time we discussed the lives of 17 black women. These were women that participated in the civil rights movement. They performed exceptionally. Most of these women were just ordinary average women, except they wanted change to take place in their lives and in the neighborhood and in the lives of their friends and families. So they got up and did something. We introduced these 17 women to you because we wanted you to compare yourself to these women. Why can't you live a life the way these women live their lives? You need to ask yourself this question. You need to ask yourself, what am I doing to participate in life, to bring about a change so my children can live a better life than what I lived? If you cannot come up with a reason why you are not participating in life, then you need to take a serious, hard look at yourself and you need to look at the people who you are living around, the people that you consult for advice, the people who you listen to. This is extremely important. If you do not change, what do you expect from the lives of your children? All you can expect is that they're going to end up prostituting themselves selling dope, or ending up in prison. Did you have bring your children into the world for these children to go, their lives to go down the drain? Well, if you brought your children into the world because you love them, then you must stand up and fight for their lives, which means that you're going to have to go back to school, which means you're going to have to change your life, which means you're going to have to clean your house, which means you're going to have to learn how to manage your time. Life is not something that you play with. You don't have time to sit and gossip. You don't have time to be talking about somebody else's breast and butt. You don't have time for foolishness. You don't have time to be sitting up smoking marijuana. Last week we had a report of a woman. She wanted to sit down and have a good time smoking marijuana. So she gave her child some uh, uh, cold medicine. She ended up killing her child. She poisoned her child with this cold medicine so she could have time to smoke marijuana. Is that not unbelievably stupid? If this ch woman was a reader, she would have known you cannot give children noxious substances like that. Their bodies cannot process those chemicals. Now this woman is facing murder charges for killing her infant child. Is that unbelievably stupid? Once you bring a child into the world, you are responsible for the life of that child, period. It is unconditional. That's the way life is. When you bring a child into the world, you are responsible for that child. Then you need to educate yourself and learn some discipline so that that child can live a healthy life. If you do not feel good about yourself, then go see a psychiatrist. Go talk to a psychologist. If you're bringing unrelated men into your home every other month, you need to go see a psychiatrist. If you're trying to screw every man in the world, trying to prove how better you are than somebody else, you need to see a psychiatrist. Something is wrong with the way that you think. If you go out to bars trying to find a man so he can give you $30 to pay your light bill, something's wrong with the way you think. 
That's a stupid proposition. You're going to take a chance on your life by getting contacting AIDS just to get somebody a screw a man so he can give you some money. And why are you so worried about your butt size and your breast size? You want to go have an operation so you can enhance your butt, as they call it, so you can have a larger butt to attract men, and you're going to take a chance on your life and leave your children here motherless. That doesn't make any sense. You need to be satisfied with the body that God gave you and go on with it. You don't have time to sit down moaning why your feet are size 9 or why they're size 11 and why you got a big nose and a flat face. You ain't got time for that foolishness. You have to get up and earn a living to make certain that your children have what they need to become strong adults who can take care of themselves, who can make good decisions and not stupid decisions like going to try to rob somebody and steal someone's purse when they don't even know how much money they got in their wallet or purse. Stop using poverty as an excuse. Yes, poverty is hell. But you can come out of it because other people have come out of it. But you have to have discipline. You're going to have to want to do it. And if you're around stupid talking people, you need to get away from them. Because that's what's pulling you down. Anyone that's not going in a good direction in their life, you need to leave them alone. In the, this session, we're going to discuss Henrietta Bell. And we're going to discuss... Selma Burke. These are two women that truly lived interesting lives. With all of these women, we would like for you to take time and go on the internet and research them further and read, truly read, how these women conducted their lives. I am going to pause for a second to take a short break while you listen to information regarding willpower and encouragement. It is all a matter of learning new behaviors. And please remember, it is easier to build strong minds than to repair injured people. What I said is a modification of a quote by Frederick Douglass. He said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Now for my break. Oftentimes, we talk so much about the success of something that we don't highlight how important failure can be. Failure is what gives us those real life lessons. And until you've experienced that, you can't truly understand what success means. Because through failure, we begin to understand who we are, what we're made of, what we're willing to do to become successful. Failure is only an event. It does not define you. All it does is create new opportunities for you to succeed. Once one door closes, more will open. But you need to believe that. You need to live life now. Risk everything for your dreams. No matter what the results are, trust in yourself that you will find a way to become successful. In this life, we do not fear failure. We embrace the opportunities that come from it. Think about everything that has been created in this world. If people would have given up after one failure, what would we have? We would literally have nothing. We do not fear failure. We grow from it, we learn from it, and we move on. When Henrietta Bell Wells 
enrolled in Wiley College in 1929. Never in her wildest dream did she think that 46 years later she would be asked to consult on a movie and that she would be speaking and giving advice to one of the leading actors of our time. When people start off in life, we never know what we will encounter or what is going to happen next. A movie was made of her experience as a debater. She consulted with Denzel Washington on the movie The Great Debater. Henrietta Pauline Wells was born January 11, 1912 in Houston, Texas. She was born to a single mother who wanted her daughter to be educated so that her daughter could earn a living and take care of herself. When Henrietta graduated from high school, her mother saw to it that she enrolled in Wiley College in Marshall, Texas. This decision changed the course of Henrietta's life. Miss Wells was the valedictorian of her senior class at Phyllis Wheatley High School in Houston. After graduating from high school in 1929, she enrolled in Wiley College on a scholarship. The college had been founded soon after the Civil War by the Freedom Aid Society of the Methodist Episcopalian Church to provide higher education for black Americans. Wiley College was founded in 1873 by the Methodist Episcopalian Church's bishop Isaac Wiley and was certified in 1882 by the Freeman's Aid Society. It is one of the oldest predominantly black colleges in the nation. Although Miss Wells did have a scholarship, she still had to work. The scholarship did not cover all of her expenses. Henrietta enrolled in a freshman English class with a professor who wanted to form a debate team. Her professor was Melvin Tolson. Mr. Tolson wanted to develop a black debate team to compete with other colleges. For whatever reason, he asked Henrietta would she like to become a member of the debate team. She said yes, and history was made. The team was formed, and Professor Tolson was able to fulfill his dream. The debate, excuse me, the debate team consisted of three males and one female. Professor Tolson told Henrietta that when he asked her to become a member of the debate team, he said, I always wanted to try a female. He joined the team in 1930. Later on, she developed a scrapbook that contained photographs and records of all of the debates that she participated in. Later, she would tell Denzel Washington she said, I was the only girl and the only freshman. Miss Wells stayed on the debate team for one year, and then she dropped out of the competition because she needed to earn enough money to support herself. Remember, her scholarship was limited. Over a 15-year period, Professor Melvin B. Tolson debate team lost only one of 75 debates. Wiley college debate team competed against historically black colleges and earned national attention with his 1935 debate against the University of Southern California. After graduating college, Henrietta Bell returned to Houston, Texas and worked as a social worker. She also taught in the Houston public school system. Later on, she married Reverend Wallace L. Wells. He died in 1987. Henrietta Wells died February 27th, 2008 in Texas. The cause of death was not given, but she was 96 years old. She was the last surviving member of the debate team that she joined in 1930. You can learn more about Henrietta Pauline Wells by going to her, your local library or researching her on the internet. I am going to pause for a second to take a short break while you listen to information regarding willpower and encouragement. It is all a matter of learning new behaviors. And please remember, it is easier to build strong minds than to repair injured people. 
what I said is a modification of a quote by Frederick Douglass. He said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Now for my break. Oftentimes, we talk so much about the success of something that we don't highlight how important failure can be. Failure is what gives us those real life lessons. And until you've experienced that, you can't truly understand what success means. Because through failure, we begin to understand who we are, what we're made of, what we're willing to do to become successful. Failure is only an event. It does not define you. All it does is create new opportunities for you to succeed. Once one door closes, more will open. But you need to believe that. You need to live life now. Risk everything for your dreams. No matter what the results are, trust in yourself that you will find a way to become successful. In this life, we do not fear failure. We embrace the opportunities that come from it. Think about everything that has been created in this world. If people would have given up after one failure, what would we have? We would literally have nothing. We do not fear failure. We grow from it, we learn from it, and we move on. Prisons are meant to serve as correctional facilities for inmates so they can lead meaningful lives after their release. At The Wall Project, it is our desire to see that they are well rehabilitated and ready to start their lives over again. To this end, we need your support to help purchase a set of books at $75 for a male prisoner or at $85 for a female prisoner. We believe we can change their lives, one book at a time. Reading teaches discipline. Reading tells you about another man's courage. Reading will tell you how to correct some of the mistakes in your life. Reading will help you solve life's problems. Reading will teach you how to find a job. Reading can help you learn a new profession or trade. Reading will help you improve your health. When you do not read you wager your life's savings trying to win big at the casino. If you have a brother sister or son or daughter in prison why not send them some serious literature to read. Books that will show them how to change their lives by changing the way they think. If you are truly interested in helping your son or daughter or sister or brother reach out to us by emailing us at murderedvoices at gmail.com we can tell you all about the program. We welcome the opportunity to send you information on how you can help your son or daughter. The dictionary defines a prophet as a person regarded as an inspired teacher, one who proclaims the will of God. Now as a person, have you asked yourself what inspires you? Where does your inspiration come from and what do you proclaim over your life? There are lots of misconceptions about what destiny is. But you need to know that you're the one who decides what your destiny would be. If a man, for instance, goes out with a table knife and stabs another man deliberately, he has proclaimed prison sentence upon himself. It's that simple. Our destiny evolves every day because of the choices we make. And that is why, as the prophet of your life, you can choose to draw inspiration from the Word of God, teach yourself godly values, proclaim good things over your life and work towards the achievement you desire. You are where you are today because of the choices you made yesterday and if you want your situation to change, you must start making decisions based on where you want to be or what you want to achieve. 
Remember also, that life is not fair to anyone, it doesn't give you what you deserve but what you desire. So it is important to work towards your desires every time irrespective of the situation around you. Do not let anything limit you, stand up for yourself and be the man you have always wanted to be. If your vagina isn't working for you, and you have a house filled with children and no husband, then you need to change. You need to start reading to learn how to win at life. You will learn a woman should never be without money. If you have to choose between eating and spending your last dollar, you need to drink water. Never spend your last dollar. Drink water. Learn that you can gain freedom through reading and writing. Power can be black or green. Take care of yourself first. Otherwise, you will not be able to take care of anyone else. You need to visit the website touchedbythelight.us to read inspirational articles and to watch inspirational videos. These articles and videos can you lead you out of the darkness. You must read. You can no longer keep conducting your life based on information that you learned 10, 15, or 20 years ago. Stop relying on what your friends have to say and their opinions. Read and get the facts and take control of your life. If you cannot read or you have a problem reading, find someone at the library that can help you. Stop wasting your life away by drinking alcohol and smoking marijuana just because you feel bad. When you wake up this morning, I want you to think about a few things. In your life, what makes you happy? Is it family, relationships? Is it working or building your career? Is it school or education? What makes you happy every day? What makes you eager to start your morning? Now while you're doing this, I want you to block any negative thoughts that you have. This is the time of day where you begin to invite positive thoughts into your mind. I want you to think about gratitude, being thankful for the things that you have in your life. Being thankful that you woke up this morning, that you have a job and a place to sleep. Being thankful that you have people around you that truly love and support you. Now make sure when you walk through today, you do it with a positive mind and live by the law of attraction. Believe 100% that positive things will happen throughout the day. And even if things don't go as planned, do not spend time focusing on that. Everything that you want in your life can be achieved. And it's up to you to go out and make it happen. And remember, express positive energy and you will get positive things back in your life. This is how you live by the law of attraction. You need to live life with a purpose. You need to spend the time needed to explore, to find your true passion. There are so many unhappy people in this world not willing to make a change. There are so many unhappy people not focusing on the big picture. One out of three people 
are happy with their lives. Think about that for a second. 70% of the people you see every day are not happy. And the majority of that has to do with purpose. People are programmed, wired to be okay with the minimum. People stay in jobs they're not passionate about. They date people who don't support them, hang out with people who don't help them grow. This can't be you. You need to spend the time to discover what your true calling is. What are you passionate about? What do you see yourself doing to make your mark? Are you in a job right now that you're truly happy with? Do you wake up every morning excited to start your day? If not, that's okay. You know now this isn't fulfilling you. But what are you gonna do about it? Are you willing to make a change to help reach your goals? If you are, it needs to start now. Because this won't happen overnight, finding your true calling. But once you do, you will see how everything changes. You will begin to see the quality of your life increase. All those problems you had, they slowly fade. You begin to see how powerful life is with a purpose. You can visit touchedbythelight.us and learn what our books have to offer to you. The second woman that I want to discuss is Selma Hortense Burke. Miss Burke was an American sculptor. She lived a fantastic life. She was married four times, twice to the same man. She married her childhood friend, Duran Woodward. He was a mortician in 1928. The marriage ended with his death less than a year later. He died of a blood disease. Then Miss Burke met Claude McKay. She married him twice and divorced him twice. Later, she married her last husband, Herman Colby. He was an architect. They married in 1949. He died in 1955. This marriage brought her to Pennsylvania where she left her mark. Selma Hortense Burke was born December 21, 1900. She died August 29, 1995. She had no children. It was not her desire to have children. She wanted to influence the world. The best words to describe her is she was driven. Give you some idea of who shaped Selma Hortense Burke. Let me tell you about her parents. She had two determined parents. They were Neil Burke and Mary Jackson Burke Cofield. They were the parents of 10 children. Her mother was a homemaker, yet she attended to her children's education. She wanted all of her children to have a college education. And all of Mary Burke's children received a college education. Her mother, Mary Burke, entered college herself at the Winston Selma State University at the age of 75. Her admission into the college demonstrated that Selma Burke's mother was determined that her entire family be educated. Did her job because all of her children were received a college education. Selma Burke's father was also an interesting man. He worked three jobs. Her father worked as a railroad brakeman, an African American Episcopalian Zion minister, and he was also a chef aboard several ocean going ships was his travels that helped to shape his daughter's future. He acquired numerous artifacts throughout his travels to the Caribbean, Africa, South America, and Europe. Her mother wanted Selma Burke to be trained as a nurse so she would always be able to get a job and be able to take care of herself. Selma Burke did become a nurse, but she later pursued her passion for the arts. She entered St. Agnes School of Nursing at St. Augustine College in Raleigh, North Carolina. 
There she became a registered nurse in 1924. After graduation, she moved to Philadelphia to begin her career as a nurse. There she enrolled in the Women's Medical College to further her education by learning operation techniques. She wanted to work in the operating room. It was here that the president of the college recommended Miss Burke work for an heiress. This job completely changed her life. Actually, it was her training as a nurse that afforded Miss Burke the ability to seek an education in the arts. She worked the job caring for the heiress for quite some time and she was able to save her money. This job led her back to her passion for sculpturing. She escaped the devastation of the depression because she was employed by the heiress during this time and she was exposed to more art. Her employer encouraged her to continue her artistic pursuits. Once the heiress died, she continued working and saving her money. She traveled to Europe just before the war broke out. She attended college. During the war, she drove a truck for the Navy. She attended several black colleges in the East. After she became a sculptress, she created many pieces of public art, often portraits of prominent African-American figures like Duke Ellington, Mary Bethune McLeod, and Booker T. Washington. Her greatest challenge as a sculptress came in 1943, when there was a national competition that was announced by the Fine Arts Commission in Washington, D.C. to create a portrait of the U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. She entered the competition. Burke was awarded the commission from a field of... 11 other competitors. Three of the competitors were black. Miss Burke originally planned to create the profile from photographs, but unable to find an appropriate picture in the newspaper or in the library records, she wrote the president requesting a sitting. President Roosevelt granted an appointment on February the 22nd, 1944. Miss Burke arrived at the White House with only some charcoal and a roll of brown butcher paper and quickly produced several sketches. Burke once remarked on the encounter in the New York Times, stating that she was in awe of the greatness of the man, that my first several studies of him was so idealized that they were no good. The finished brown plaque listed four freedoms above Roosevelt's head. Freedom from want, freedom from fear, freedom to worship, and freedom of speech. The plaque was installed at the Record of Deeds building in Washington, D.C. Prior to its installation, however, Eleanor Roosevelt and the members of the Fine Arts Commission were sought for approval. Ms. Burke remembered vividly that Ms. Roosevelt's criticism that the image looked too young. According to the New York Times, Miss Burke responded, I have not done it for today, but for tomorrow and tomorrow. 500 years from now, America and all the world will want to look at our president, not as he was the last few months before he died, but as we saw him for most of the time when he was with us, strong, so full of life, and with the wonderful look of going forward. On September the 24th, 1945, Six months after President Roosevelt's death, Miss Burke's portrait finally received a public viewing. The source of Roosevelt's image on the dime has recently received much attention. John R. Sinnock, the chief engrader at the U.S. Mint, has his initials on the profile. The dime's head, however, is merely a mirror image of the plaque created by Selma Burke. With the exception of a few detailed changes in the arrangement of Roosevelt's hair. Moreover, the National Archives and the Record Administration of the Franklin D. Roosevelt's Library in Hyatt Park, New York, stated the dime portrait originated with the sculpture of Franklin Della Roosevelt, done by Selma Burke. Determined that young minds would not be discouraged by the lack of training or by the lack of creative outlets. Selma Burke launched a new career by teaching her craft in numerous schools, workshops, and studios, and even her own home. Her work at the Harlan Art Center in New York influenced numerous 
nationally recognized African American artists, which includes Robert Blackburn, Jacob Lawrence, and Ernest Cheeslow. Burke also taught at federally sponsored work progress administration programs. The Friends of the Charter Schools in Pennsylvania, St. George School in New York, and the Salisbury School in Buck County, Pennsylvania, as well as several colleges, which included the Mellon Foundation and the Harvard University. After this achievement, Selma Burke settled in Pennsylvania with her husband, Herman Colby. There she started the school. Selma Burke died August 29th, 1995. I am going to pause for a second to take a short break while you listen to information regarding willpower and encouragement. It is all a matter of learning new behaviors. And please remember, it is easier to build strong minds than to repair injured people. What I said is a modification of a quote by Frederick Douglass. He said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Now for my break. Will you help us? Our prison ministry is trying to reach women with sons and or brothers in prison. We would like for these women to help us with our ministry and halt the growing population of incarcerated men. If you know of someone with a loved one in prison, please contact us at 734-686-1444 or email us at murderedvoices at gmail.com. We must teach men to read to keep them from entering prison or before they leave prison. Men are now entering prison for killing their children. This has to stop. If we can reduce these murders by teaching men to read, to think clearly, and to manage their emotions. Edward James Oma said, education is a vaccine for violence. We must do everything we can in our power to stop these heinous murders. Please reach out to us. When we work together, we win. I have an important question for you. Do you love Jesus? I mean, do you really love Jesus? Jesus said, I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. It's easy for us to live our daily lives and not think of those locked away in prison who need the love of Christ. Remember, Jesus died for them too. And there is a way you can extend his love to them right where you are, without a big sacrifice in time or money. And I'll tell you how in just a few moments from now. Often when men end up in prison, they are leaving families behind. We live in a time when there is a generation of children who often do not have a father at home for a variety of reasons. But when those fathers are in prison, we can reach them. You see, many men in prison are illiterate and not prepared for life on the outside of prison, which leads to reoffending, damage to our communities, and even further damage to the families they leave behind. You can be sure that they need to hear and accept the gospel as well. And we have something special that you can be a part of to address both of those issues. It's called The Wall. The Wall provides books to prisoners so that they can learn how to read and be better prepared for life in the real world. But what's more, these books share the gospel and practical information to help in various aspects of real life. The Wall addresses life today as well as our eternal hope for tomorrow. To make this project reach as many people as possible, your help is needed. A small donation will go a long way to get these books into the hands of people who need them the most. Imagine what it would be like to be in heaven and meet someone who told you that a book that you helped place in their hands was key to helping them for being prepared for life outside of prison. Help them be better husbands and fathers, and most importantly, led them to Christ. You can have that impact today. You may be watching this at your church today and possibly have a representative there right now. If so, open your heart and give what you can, and be sure to talk about sponsorship opportunities for a full book pack. If you are watching this online or in a setting without a representative, 
simply go to www.touchedbythelight.org and help make a difference right now that will make an impact for today as well as eternity. You're watching Detroit's own WHPR-TV, Detroit Live. Hi, this is Renee stepping out on faith. You can watch me 24 hours a day, seven days a week on the WHPR-TV Now app. Download our free app at WHPR-TV Now. Weekdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Become a sponsor of the Women of Courage show by inviting 10 women for a pleasant afternoon to listen to us speak at your venue. Help us change our community to one of peace and harmony. The Women of Courage show is supported by the Women and Children's Restoration Ministries to help women problem solve and to help women realize their dreams. Women should believe that anything is possible. Our sole purpose is the restoration of injured women, both physically and mentally. We meet twice a month on Saturday at a local restaurant to discuss subjects germane to women. We see five main problems of black women that we must solve ourselves. One is the sexual abuse of children, bringing unrelated males into the home and fail to notice changes in behavior, rape and murder of black women, failure to learn the warning signs, breast cancer, which is a failure to be examined, sex trafficking of black women, accepting prostitution as a way of life, economic trials of black women due to the inability to read or lack of education. Learn how to sponsor the Women of Courage show by speaking to our spokesperson, Renee of WHPR. She can be reached at Renee88.1FM at gmail.com. I repeat, Renee88.1FM at gmail.com. She will tell you all about it, or you can leave a message at the number 734 686 one four four four. Thank you. Dear listeners, help us save the life. Stop breast cancer from taking lives. Will you assist us in putting the booklet Black Women and Breast Cancer in the Hands of a Million People? Please go to the website www.touchedbythelight.us and download the booklet Black Women and Breast Cancer. Then email this booklet to five friends asking them to email the booklet to five of their friends. We are trying to reach a million women with this information to save lives. The death of one woman to breast cancer from our community is one woman too many. We thank you for your support. Reading is not only a necessity of life, it is an activity that can be fun. Why not visit the website touchedbythelight.us and learn more about the books that we have discussed during our programs. Books such as A Christian is Never Desperate, What You Must Do to Win, Life-Saving Advice, Women of Courage Part 1 and 2, You Are the Prophet of Your Life, and the book Murdered Voices. We think you will be glad that you took the time out of your day to visit our website, touchedbythelight.us. Have a great day. Here are some more reasons why you should vote whenever there is an election. Number one, elections have consequences. You have the power to decide on the quality of life you want for yourself and future generations. Voting is your chance to stand up for the issues you care about like public transportation, raising the minimum wage, or funding local schools. This is your life. Take the time to help decide what is best. Not voting means you are giving up your voice. Elections are decided by the people who go out and vote. Take some time and learn about the measures 
and the candidates and the issues. If you don't vote, someone else will make the decision for you. Your power is in your vote. Number three, it is your money. You pay taxes, but you do not know how the money is being used. Most people don't. Voting is your chance to choose how your tax dollars should be spent, such as funding for health care and social services. Food stamps are very important to the elderly. Voice your concern by voting. Voting is an opportunity for change. Do you want to make a positive impact with your life? Voting gives you that chance. Support the candidates and the ballot measures that can help your community and your state and even the nation for the greater good. Make your voice heard in these elections. The community depends on you. Our communities are made up of friends, loved ones, neighbors, and children. Some may not know how important voting is, while others don't have the privilege. Make the decision to vote for yourself and those around you. Make sure your voice is heard. Vote in all upcoming elections. Make certain that your voice is heard. Start preparing now to vote. Go and register at the Secretary of State's office. Find out where your polling place is located and be prepared to be the first person in line on the voting day. If you do not have transportation to the polling place, call your local library and find out who is offering transportation to polling locations. Regardless, you must vote. If your vagina isn't working for you and you have a house filled with children and no husband, then you need to change. You need to start reading to learn how to win at life. You will learn a woman should never be without money. If you have to choose between eating and spending your last dollar, you need to drink water. Never spend your last dollar. Drink water. Learn that you can gain freedom through reading and writing. Power can be black or green. Take care of yourself first. Otherwise, you will not be able to take care of anyone else. You need to visit the website touchedbythelight.us to read inspirational articles and to watch inspirational videos. These articles and videos can you lead you out of the darkness. You must read. You can no longer keep conducting your life based on information that you learned 10, 15, or 20 years ago. Stop relying on what your friends have to say and their opinions. Read and get the facts and take control of your life. If you cannot read or you have a problem reading, find someone at the library that can help you. Stop wasting your life away by drinking alcohol and smoking marijuana just because you feel bad. Are you ready to make the most important step towards realizing your deepest life aspirations and dreams of becoming an aspiring, courageous woman? If you are truly feeling prepared to learn all you could possibly need to know in order to set up your life for success and understand how to avoid the common mistakes that present the pitfall of most, even the grandest dreams and ambitions while getting on the fast track towards building a powerful, lasting, and successful character, personality, and life, you are in the right place. With Women of Courage, we pride ourselves on providing ambitious, aspiring ladies with the ultimate, most comprehensive, one-stop source of invaluable knowledge designed with one single purpose empowering you to efficiently start on your way to absolute success and successfully building your life the way you want it to be. Please watch the intro video. Will you help us? Our prison ministry is trying to reach women with sons and or brothers in prison. We would like for these women to help us with our ministry and halt the growing population of incarcerated men. If you know of someone with a loved one in prison, please contact us at 734-686-1444 or email us at murderedvoices at gmail.com. 
We must teach men to read, to keep them from entering prison or before they leave prison. Men are now entering prison for killing their children. This has to stop. If we can reduce these murders by teaching men to read, to think clearly, and to manage their emotions. Edward James Oma said, Education is a vaccine for violence. We must do everything we can in our power to stop these heinous murders. Please reach out to us. When we work together, we win. Dear listeners, help us save the life. Stop breast cancer from taking lives. Will you assist us in putting the booklet, Black Women and Breast Cancer, in the hands of a million people? Please go to the website www.touched by the light.us and download the booklet Black Women and Breast Cancer. Then email this booklet to five friends, asking them to email the booklet to five of their friends. We are trying to reach a million women with this information to save lives. The death of one woman to breast cancer from our community is one woman too many. We thank you for your support. You're watching Detroit's own WHPR-TV, Detroit Live. Hi, this is Renee stepping out on faith. You can watch me 24 hours a day, seven days a week on the WHPR-TV Now app. Download our free app at WHPR-TV Now. Weekdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. God bless and remember, believe in yourself and stand up. Thank you for listening to Women of Courage and have a great day.